Welcome to Keyframers. I'm Stephen Shaw. And I'm David Korshid. Right now, we're going to break down a technique used in the uh, contact form radio button transition uh, video. You can check out the full live stream uh, to see exactly how we built everything. So, coordinating animations, it can be difficult with, with CSS. Uh, but we're, we're using a few different techniques. Um, why don't you talk to us about the data state set up here, David? Sure. So data state is a technique that we typically use uh, to choreograph animations between different states. Now, keep in mind that data state is not a standard attribute. It's called a data attribute because it defines data properties that are custom, basically user presented uh, data attributes. So we're just using states to keep track of what the state of the uh, application is. It could either be in talk, which is this let's talk screen that you see here, or it could be email where we ask you what's your email and you could type your email in. And of course you could go back and forth between these two states. Um, what we're doing in the JavaScript is uh, we are changing the dataset.state uh, based on um, what happens. So uh, for example, over here we have, um, Oh, yeah, you have your yeah. data too. Uh -huh. ba so basically is... recreating uh, links, uh, but with, yeah. with data attributes. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, this, this could be a, a cleaner Clever. approach and needs to be more robust for, for a real application. But for this simple example, anything that has this data too attribute uh, is going to change the data state um, on, yeah. on, the, on the app. And that, that's all this JavaScript down here does. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and we've we've covered um, some techniques before about um, like how to layer your app and, and all of that. Basically, all of these states are on top of each other. They're just hidden with opacity. Uh, we're using display grid and and then targeting all the children with grid area one one, um, so that so that both of these uh, field sets are overlapped here. A group equals email, and then. Down at the at the very bottom is where we're handling all of our all of our uh, transitiony kind of stuff. Um, so the data groups are opacity zero, and we're transitioning the the opacity there. Um, and when the state matches the group, uh, basically it's opacity one. Uh, and yeah, we're doing we're doing some fun stuff with the actual coordination um, using CSS variables. Um, so up up at the very top, I'm targeting everything. So using this universal selector and the, the pseudo elements um, so that everything is kind of working off these same CSS variables. Uh, and, and we're populating them directly on, on the animation properties and the transition properties. Uh, but using CSS variables and this kind of weak universal selector, they can easily be overridden. But this just gives us some nice defaults. Uh, but since we're not specifying an animation name, and since we're not uh, giving it a transition property, uh, it, it's not going to apply unless we give it that. Um, so down here in our um, it, in the uh, transition between the two states, uh, you can see how we're overriding the delay value here, uh, so that we get a little bit of uh, of the state overlapping uh, by the state that's coming in is a little more delayed, and the state that's going out. Um, is is a little less uh, less delayed, so they they overlap each other just just slightly, um, and that gives a nice effect. And then we can we can use those uh, those transition properties plus the plus the duration there to give us um, this this nice effect of the of the actual uh, uh, radio buttons uh, going in. And we go into more into depth. Uh, in the full live video and in our last episode um, about uh, the, the racial wealth gap um, charts. Um, so go back and check those out if you want more on those on those techniques and we'll you know continue exploring this and, and playing around with it to, to find out more. Yeah. 